Christ may be pointing to 9-11 of this year as the day of the rapture, which is also the day of the start of the tribulation period. Um, Christ says there will be two tribulation periods. The end time trib will follow, quote, immediately after, unquote, the first trib. That's Matthew 24, 29. The problem is the first trib is, quote, the tribulation of those days, which refers back to 70 A.D. How can the end time trib follow immediately after the trib of A.D. 70 when about 2,000 years have already passed since A.D. 70? That's easy. All we need to do is exclude the years and instead concentrate on the months and days. Let me give you an example. I was born in 1950. Now, if you were born in 1990, how could you claim to be born immediately after me? Well, if I was born on March 9 and you were born on March 10, you really could claim that you were born immediately after me. Um, one day later, you're, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're excluding the years. Now, ditto with the two tribs. If we exclude, or if we uh, exclude the difference in years, this leaves us with months and days. The tribulation of A.D. 70 ended, according to Josephus the historian, it ended uh, on the 8th of Elul, which is a Roman month. Uh, that's from his book, The Wars of the Jews, Book 6, Chapter 10. Now, Elul, the 8th of Elul, was when the Roman siege of Jerusalem was finished. It was completed. Uh, uh, all, all fighting ceased. All resistance ended. We can paraphrase Christ's words in Matthew 24, 29 like this. Immediately after the 8th of Elul, the end time trib will begin. Now, in this year, 2021, the first of Elul falls on August the 8th. So if we add a week, we get uh, August the 15th, and we get to Elul 8th, the 8th of Elul. Uh, that, would, that would mean that... Uh, Immediately after that, that date, uh, the end time trib should begin. Now, uh, September the 11th is immediately after um, August 15th. Uh, uh, well, let's say you have a month. A month after August 15th, that would be counted as immediately after. And September the 11th is one day uh, within uh, one day uh, within that month. Uh, I'm saying that 9-11 is, is one possibility. But um, in a looser sense, the month... Uh, within the month after August 15th. That's what I'm saying. Okay, now I'm, I'm being definite. I'm, I'm picking one day out of that 30-day period. It would be 9-11. Uh, but this, there's nothing definite here. 
Uh, this is a guess on my part. Um, okay, P.S. P.S. Christ says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, their stars will fall. Now why am I saying that the stars falling equals the start of the end time trip? Well, in Luke, Luke's version, uh, Luke 21, uh, verse 25 through 26, it says the signs in the sky will be the time of distress and perplexity, perplexity of nations. And I'm saying that amounts to the trip. But uh, to be more clear, um, okay, we combine Matthew 24 and Luke 21, and we get the impression that the stars falling is um, man-made stars. And that's why I say it's the start of the trip, because uh, the time that Russia rules the world, that's the end time trip. Luke 21, 25 through 26, uh, verses 25 and 26, uh, they speak about, they speak of men having heart attacks for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Now, uh, heart attacks due to fear, uh, that sounds pretty scary, but it's these words here, quote, those things which are coming on the earth. Uh, uh, that would be referring back to uh, what Matthew 24 says, the stars falling uh, from heaven to earth. Now, in Matthew 24, the stars falling occurs in the context of the rapture, because right after that, it says the angels will be gathering the elect from the from the four directions of the earth, the four uh, di uh, ends of the earth. Um, and, and in First Thessalonians five. Verse 2 and 3, it says the rapture uh, occurs at a time of sudden destruction. Uh, and then it goes on to say it's wartime destruction. Because it uses the words or the phrase, um, Day of the Lord. Now, why do I say the sudden destruction is end time destruction? Because in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 3, it says, The day of the Lord. Now, this phrase always refers, in the Old Testament, uh, it always refers to wartime destruction. Uh, uh, war as God's instrument of judgment and justice. In Ezekiel 30, verse 3 and verse 10, it says, It's the day of the Lord for Egypt because the armies of Babylon are coming to bring destruction. Now, in Isaiah 13, verse 1 uh, verse 6 and verse 17, it says, It's the day of the Lord for Babylon, um, because the armies of the Medes will bring destruction to Babylon. So the day of the Lord always refers to wartime destruction. So when it, in First Thessalonians, when it says the rapture is coming at a time of sudden destruction on the day of the Lord, we know it's wartime destruction and conquest. And it would have to be Russia. Uh, and uh, long story short, um, that uh, time of Russian conquest 
of Europe. Uh, that's in uh, Daniel 7, verse 8. Uh, that would be the end time trip. So I, that takes care of that part that I had uh, left uh, for the PS. Now, because Matthew 24, 29 connects the stars falling to the rapture uh, in verse 30 and 31, uh, and the rapture in uh, 1 Thessalonians is connected to the sudden destruction and the day of the Lord, uh, we can say, we can say that the stars falling, the time of the stars falling, equals the start of the end time trip. I'm going to write a summary of this video in the description box under the video so you can make a paper copy so that when EMP occurs, uh, and uh, computers are destroyed and the grid goes down, you'll still have uh, the data in this video. I'm expecting, uh, one more time, I'm expecting the, the Russian attack, which is the start of the trip, I'm expecting that 9-11 uh, or sometime within one month of August 15th.